And there we go. We have successfully set up an AI agent that will automatically trade on our behalf. We could be sleeping. We could be cooking food. Doesn't matter. It's trading. Looking pretty good. Let's build an AI agent that's going to be able to trade stocks on our behalf. Your next question might be, is Corbin, why is there a bunch of politicians behind you? Is because this AI agent, we're going to train on U.S. politicians trading data and trade off that. The best part though, is that this is gonna require no code, all automatic, and let AI do the heavy lifting of the actual trade. And on top of that, you're gonna be able to laser in this AI agent to trade on whatever you care about. So if you're like Corbin, I don't really care how US politicians trade, then that's fine. You're gonna be able to see how you can laser this in for whatever you think is relevant for a trade. Sound good? Let's jump in. Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, we're going to be creating a algo trading bot that trades on our behalf. And the reason I have that little alpaca behind me is because this is what's going to give the AI agent the ability to trade stocks. So instead of you sitting at your computer like, Corbin, I have to hit buy and sell. No, no, no. We're going to let the robots do that. And the best part is I'm going to show you how to do this with no code, all automatic, using Zapier agents. I've done tons of videos on Zapier agents, so you can check them out. I'll leave a couple in the description that shows you how to do web parsing. I believe another one there will show you how to automatically respond to emails. But one thing as I was playing around with this that this can do, which is awesome, is basically be a trading bot. So before we dive any deeper, this video is sponsored by Zapier and this is part of my ongoing series with Zapier. But we keep jumping in calls and we're like, yo, what's really cool? What do you want to do? And I'm like, you know what? Let's show them how to create a trading bot that could be used on Wall Street. Sound good? Let's jump in. Last side note, this video is kind of inspired by Nancy Pelosi stock trading because like there's like a whole community behind this. You might not know this, but there is like a ton of websites and community around just Nancy Pelosi as a politician. Not all the politicians, which I'll show you how to do in this video. But in theory, if you just want to track Nancy Pelosi stock trades, you can with the method I'm about to show you in this video. Enough talking. Let's do it. First thing we need to do is sign up with an account on Alpaca. I'll leave this in the description down below. Sign up for free. So here we go. Once we are logged in, this is going to be a paper account. Obviously, to trade real money, you'll just essentially create a real account, connect bank account, etc. For now, though, all we care about is seeing how we set this up. So let's get our API key. It does look like we'll need to enable an authenticator. So we'll do that. Activate. If you don't have an authenticator app, just go to your app store, type an authenticator app. You'll be able to download one for free. So now that we're logged in here, we're going to generate a new key for the paper account. Obviously, you would generate the new key for the live account when you're ready to go. I got my key right here, so I'm going to go and copy. I don't know if I'm going to blur that out in editing. I might not. But if it's right there, you can go ahead and try to use it. It probably won't work. So once we have that, though, we're going to come back to Zapier. Go ahead and go to the apps section on our sidebar here. We're going to look for Alpaca. It's the first result, but we can just go ahead and search it anyways. Just Alpa. Go in here. I'm going to delete this old one because this is like, as you can see, a year ago. So we're going to do a new connection here. So add connection. And there we go. It's actually really nice here. So we can go ahead and just hit paper. Allow. We are connected. This part right here is fundamental as this is the part that's going to allow us to actually trade the stock or sell the stock. What's really cool about a pack of two, you can do this with crypto. You can even do this with option contracts as well if you like that. You wanna be a little risky. Sometimes you gotta be risky. I do like options. Now that we set that up, let's set up our AI agent. Yes, our money maker, our really good time maker. Let's go ahead and call this agent Algo Trader. Start from scratch. One thing I love about Zapier agents that is really hard to access throughout the entire market is its ability to web scrape any page. So traditionally, if we were to do the logic I'm about to show you right now, we would have needed like an RSS feed in order to identify when new data is available. But what you'll notice is is typically RSS feeds aren't really that readily available. Now I did a whole other video showing you how to create a trading bot that's based off stock news, just like general RSS feeds. But this one, we're gonna make a little bit fun and we're gonna trade based off US representatives. So here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to do run behavior here, create behavior. Let's start off on title behavior. We're gonna say this US rep trade, call it that. Nice. Instead of on demand, because we want this to work, whether we're asleep, away from our computer, or maybe just in the Bahamas on a beach, just drinking a pina colada, we're going to do scheduled. And the way we can do it is we can do every day, time of day we'll do on market open. So for me, it's around 8.30 a.m. For you, it would be whatever your time zone is. Also, this is U.S. markets. Now, because the markets aren't open on the weekends, we don't care. So we're going to do trigger on weekends. No. Nice. So here's the situation as I drink this amazing Houston blend of coffee. Nice little cinnamon in it. So we're going to build this step by step. And while we're building this, we're going to be testing it. Here is step one. Here is a website link of the recent trades made by U.S. representatives. What I want you to do is find the most recent trade and output the stock ticker and U.S. representative. 
website link and then provide the relevant data here. The way I got that website link is I simply just went to this page. And as you can see, this shows most recent trades. And then I come up here and copy the underlying link here, paste over. This method can be applied to any website, any context, anything you care about. Follow the same step. So let's first off see if this even works. We should be expecting an output here of French Hill and CVS. Start instructions and test. I wanna point out as well, in reality, the only thing we really care about is the stock ticker to make the trade. I also included the US representative's name because that gives you more context of maybe things you care about. Maybe there is certain US representatives that you don't care about their trade. So just ignore that and you'll see how we can ignore certain things depending on the flow past this. There you go. Successfully passed stage one here where I identified French Hill and CVS as the most recent trade. And obviously with the stock market and how the stock market works, timing is very important. That can make the difference between a trade you make 100% on and a trade you make like 12% on. That's why I like options. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Because I don't really care about the US representative, if you do, put it there, I might just do stock ticker. And then next step would be this. What I'm about to show you right here is going to work. And when I did it, I was like, this is awesome. Like you can apply this to anything. Based on the result, check if it is a previously traded stock here. How do we do that, Corbin? Watch this. We're gonna use an action called storage. And the first thing we need to do is we need to see if this was already previously set, right? To do that, we are gonna do get value. What is storage? How do we leverage this? I want you to think of storage as this is like our little notebook of like, okay, I already traded CVS two weeks ago. Therefore, I don't necessarily want to do another trade with CVS for X, Y, Z reason. This kind of logic can be applied elsewhere. But the idea is this, set a specific value. We're going to store data towards a key, right? So we're going to say US politics trade. And what happens is that we'll create an array here. When I say array, this is like data point one, data point two, data point three. The first data point that will be put here will just be the ticker. This will make more sense as we get going here. But as you can see, if no search results are found, we're gonna do this. Set specific value for this field, and we're just gonna mark it as successful. Because if no search results are found, that means that we haven't traded this stock before, which means that we're green-lighted for the next stage here. Watch this. So that's getting the value, we're checking it. But that means that if we haven't traded this stock before, and we haven't stored it in that key before, let's go ahead and set it then. So we're gonna do another action here. We'll do storage again. This storage block is like extremely underplayed with Zapier. Like a lot of people don't even realize it exists. Trust me, you can really create some cool automations with this. I might have to do a whole separate video on it. But for now, we're gonna do get value. Cause we're not setting the value, or sorry, we're gonna set the value because we already did get value in the previous step here. We're gonna do set value here. And one thing I wanna point out is I'm gonna say, based on the result, check if the previously stocks traded here. If it's there, then exit out of all actions because we just want to leave the trade like we don't want to actually trade it we've already traded it before let's just leave the situation if it doesn't exist in this storage let's go ahead and set this ticker here and this is where we're going to be setting our value what's very important here is that we're going to be setting it towards the same key u.s politics trade this has to be spelled exactly like that so we're going to say set specific value boom and then we can just let the agent handle the actual value it's going to put in the field because that's going to be a variable depending on the ticker that is found within this flow Save. So this makes more sense here. I'm gonna add one extra line here just so we can see clarity of all this, like this, all this working together, right? Here's the situation and here's what we're gonna expect right here. If this is a new ticker that we set, say yes, new ticker in the ticker name. If it's an old ticker that we've already set, say we traded it already. Therefore, what we should see in this first run around is gonna be, yes, new ticker, retest behavior, because we've never traded and stored that value in CVS. But on this second time around, it's going to say we've already traded it already. This kind of logic that you're about to see right now, this can apply to a lot of stuff. We should also see the thought process here from our AI agent basically being like, yeah, look it, let me check if we've seen this ticker before. Like, is this not awesome? <laughs> this is cool. And then obviously it hasn't seen it yet. So the next step is like, okay, we haven't seen it. Let's store the ticker then. Storing it now. In testing, it's going to approve whether or not this is a correct way of handling the information, which obviously is because that's the ticker CVS. And then we should be saying here, yes, new ticker and the ticker name. Talk about like next level. People are underplaying agents right now. There is so much you could do. And that's just cool. Let's keep going. Actually, before we get going here, let me show you how advanced these agents are. It really gives you context of what you can do here. Retest behavior. CVS already exists in that data storage now. Therefore, this is going to say we traded already. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We in the future now. 
We traded already. The most recent trade was CVS, but this ticker was already in our storage. I like it. So knowing that, we may have to just change our prompt here from like the most recent trade to like the second most recent. Actually, what we'll do then is we'll just change our storage key. So like, let's say you're building a bunch of tickers and after a while you're like, you know what, Corbin, it keeps like overlapping and I'm having issues. Just add like a one there. It's gonna be a whole new storage bucket here and it's gonna be able to reference new trades. Think of it like cleaning the slate. Now here's what's cool. Now that we've done that, let's do some research. Now this logic right here is malleable. Approach this how you want to approach it for your threshold of either buying or selling slash shorting. And obviously the other stuff when it comes to option contracts and everything of that nature. It's simply this though. Based on this stock ticker, I want you to do more research whether the stock is a buy or sell. From there, you can add more context of like only buy it if the floats this much, only buy it if it's EPY is up 10%, et cetera. Based on your research, give me a buy score out of 100. If it's over 70, then we'll say it's a buy and do. And then I'm placing the action here from earlier from Apaka. Place order. So we're going to use your Apalka account here. For the symbol, we're going to let the agent generate that because it knows a CVS or whatever the ticker will be. For the side, I went ahead and just set the specific field to buy. So just knows to buy. Quantity, you're definitely going to have to set this. I just put 10. Are you trading 100? Are you trading 1,000? Your discretion. Oh, and that's like stock amount, how many stocks you're buying. Notional, agent, and then a type could be limit depending on your context. I'm going to just say market. Everything else is the agent. Hit save. And then if it's below 70, then do nothing. Let's just exit out all actions because this is not signaling a buy based off the AI agent's research. Watch this. No coding, just prompting, retest behavior. Algo Trader is on it. Loading in the website that we provided as data, capitaltrades.com slash trades. Checking if it's already been traded before in the past. And because we cleared that storage, it's not going to find it. So now it's going to store it. Nice. And... It's going to start analyzing if it's a good investment. This little approve situation won't pop up when we actually turn it on. This is purely just because we're testing within this little environment. So we're going to say approve for now. Here we go. Now it's going to be researching whether this would be a good buy. And based off our scoring, it should be over 70 in order to incur a buy. And that score can be different, right? So maybe your threshold is 50. Maybe it's 95. Whatever it may be, set that threshold. Ooh, okay. Okay. <laughs> It received a 58 out of 100, so this was not a buy. I guess you saw the version of it not placing that order. Let's make it so it actually does place the order, though, just so we can get an idea. So I'm going to go ahead and real quickly reset my storage buckets here so we can kind of go through the entire flow again. And because it gave it a 58 there, we're going to lower like our threshold to like, if you say it's over 40, then buy and do. I would not encourage that. I definitely want to encourage that. Retest behavior. While that's running and loading here, you can come to your Alpaca account, go to home, and this is where you're gonna be able to see all your trades. And there we go. We have successfully set up an AI agent that will automatically trade on our behalf. We could be sleeping, we could be cooking food, doesn't matter, it's trading, looking pretty good. And one thing I wanna point out that's gonna be really cool that we're gonna be able to add to this algo trader in the future is our ability to actually watch the news or any videos on the topic of stocks, crypto, and the markets. Pretty soon here, the platform of Bump Ups is gonna have API documentation available that's gonna allow us to watch any YouTube video, any news feed video, any type of video, and we're gonna be able to analyze it and see if the trade is good or not. API and bump ups pretty soon. That concludes today's video. Make sure you leave a like if you found value. In the description down below, I'm gonna leave my other videos on AI agents that you may be interested in. Without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Algo trading bot. Two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.